Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to their next uh, book break. Today, it's going to be me, Claire, and I have two guests with me, Karen and Stephanie, who are librarians here at the Greece Public Library. Um, as you know, I do a couple of book groups. I do some of the teen programming here at the library. So I'm going to let uh, Stephanie introduce herself and we'll get started with book break. Hi everybody, um, my name is Stephanie. I'm one of the adult services librarians here. Um, I order most of our adult fiction. Um, I run our Forever YA book club and our virtual mystery book club because I read a lot of different genres and variety. Um, so thanks for watching today. Karen? Hi guys, my name is Karen Dysinger. I'm a library assistant here at the library. You would find me at most reference desks. I also do some of the tween programming here at the library. So our coding classes, our breakout games. Um, I also develop the collection for children's fiction, easy readers. I also do some of our Barnard Crossing collection. Awesome. So I'm going to get started today with our first book. And it's something that I don't normally do because I'm not an audio person, but I, I tapped into my a free Audible book and got Breakshot, which is James Taylor's memoir for his first 21 years. And I have to say, it was really easy listening. It's only an hour and a half long, and it combines storytelling, music, performance, and some of his musical selections. Some are new, and they come from his new American Standards album. Um, but it's really, it was just interesting to hear him telling his own story. And um, his family really had a, a tough time. By the time 1970 rolled around, his parents' marriage had dissolved. He had already checked himself into um, a mental institution to get help he needed. Um, and his family had a lot of alcoholism and other problems, which eventually became channeled into his music. So you get to hear the stories of how sweet J.B. James got to be. Um, one of the things I really liked is I didn't know how much the Beatles had an influence on his career and got him started. So that was really fascinating to hear how Paul McCartney helped him get recording and how he hung out with them. Um, so I really would recommend this if you are a James Taylor fan or just like music and memoirs in general. Yeah, I grew up listening to James Taylor because my dad would play him on the guitar. So that sounds really good. Um, you have a favorite song? I like um, Carolina in my mind. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. And Country Roads. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Definitely sounds like a good one. So, I also I liked some of his newer stuff like Mexico. Okay. Um, but this was just his first twenty-one years. So yeah, yeah. So it was older. Yeah. Than. Very cool. Yeah. I hope he does a part two. Sounds great. And kind yeah. of covers the rest. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I will. So my book next, um, the book that I chose was Pretty Girls by Kathy Slaughter. We actually read this for our virtual club. Um, it's available on about any late times if you're interested in it. Um, but yeah, I love She's one of my favorite authors. They're very sensitive for a book. Um, this particular one was about two sisters who, when they were children, their older sister disappeared. She's been gone for 20 years. They've never found any answers. Um, and because of it, the family basically broke her heart. These sisters had spoken in 20 years. And then one of their husbands gets murdered. And that brings the sisters back together because they want to solve this murder and they also want to solve the disappearance of their sister. Um, so there's a few mysteries at play in this book. And it's very interesting to see how they come together, um, how they find these different ways. It's definitely a little bit graphic, so I will give a little uh, warning to people that don't like graphic books to steer clear. But, but if you don't mind, mind that, this book is very, very fast paced. Um, I, think I think it's around 500 pages, pages but I still fly through it. it. Um, um, Aaron read it too for the book club, and I know you won't get five stars. So, so if you love us all, I'm definitely check out Aaron's 
Yeah, I've read some other books by Karen Slaughter. I think I read The Good Daughter, which was also really good, too. I love that one. Yeah, that's my favorite of hers, I think. But this one is a pretty This cool was book. a great... Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was a great book for book discussion. We had a great conversation, and I felt like the characters were really well developed. I don't honestly read a lot of suspense, and I find that I've been reading a lot of those types of novels lately, and this was my favorite so far of this year. So I was really excited to be able to read that book. Yeah, yeah this, this is definitely one of my favorites of the year already, too. It was just it totally cut down into your seat. Every, Every time I finish a chapter, chapter I'd be like, I, I gotta, gotta do another one, and I would just keep reading like <laughs> that. So, yeah, yeah, it's a good, a good one. one. I like a nice. thriller just to escape. I don't know what it yeah. is, but. Yep. So one of the books that I chose to talk about was is called The Wives, and it's by Taryn Fisher. This is another suspense. It's a psychological thriller. Um, I read this actually in 2019. My favorite author, her name is Colleen Hoover, she suggested this to all of her fan base um, for her titles because one of my favorite books is Verity, which is written by her. And this was a crazy read. I read this in under a day, could not put it down. Um, this book is about a woman named Thursday and she is married to a man named Seth. Seth is married to two other women. Ooh. They have never met. Um, Thursday finds herself getting interested in learning more about the other wives. So she starts an investigation. She looks on social media. She goes behind Seth's back and she tries to meet these women. Not everything that you're reading is what you think. Um, it's a big psychological type story. So I was absolutely shocked by the ending of this book. I did not see it coming at all. Um, I had actually one of my sisters read this book and we were talking about it and she saw the ending happening and I didn't. So that was kind of interesting. Um, one of the biggest details of this book is that Thursday um, meets someone called Tuesday. So the wives have names of the week. They only see their husband once a week. Yes. Wow. <laughs> so the most interesting part is when she travels to meet this person. Um, she isn't who you think she is. Um, it's a really good story. Psychological, if you like that type of story. A lot of people who like Gone Girl would really like this book. Oh, I love Gone Girl, so I need to read that one. I know a lot of people hate Gone Girl. But I'm not a Peter, Peter. Hate it. Yeah. <laughs> I liked Gone Girl. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Um, so basically, if you like Colleen Hoover, you're probably going to like this one, it sounds like. Yeah, Colleen Hoover has more contemporary romance type novels, but her okay. one book called Verity yeah. is considered a thriller, so okay. that would be similar to The Wives. All right, cool. Yeah, I've seen Verity on a lot of people's lists mm -hmm. of must-reads, so. Yep, yeah, I have too. What do you got for us, Claire? Well... I'm trying to get it to go full screen, but this is something different, but it's called The One and Only Bob. Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, I, I checked this out because The One and Only Ivan, even though it's a middle grade book, has always been one of my favorite yeah, books. That's a good As you one. know, I'm a big animal lover, and um, just the story of that gorilla just really captivated me, and especially knowing that it was based on a real character or a real, per a, you know, a real animal. So I was really anxious to read The One and Only Bob by Catherine Applegate to see if it lived up to the same, you know, hype for me. Mm -hmm. um, as, as normal with kind of simple things, it really, although it wasn't the same, I thought it was, was very cute. And I thought that kids that would have enjoyed The One and Only Ivan might really like this one. Um, Bob was the dog that kind of made him oh, yeah. into Ivan's cage and they yeah. friends. So that friendship continues. And then the little girl that visited was the one that eventually adopted Bob. So this okay. starts out with his new life. He's been adopted, so he's not a stray anymore. Um, he's trying to get used to giving up his wild and free ways. Mm -hmm. He's a really funny character, and one of the things that the author said is the person that's voicing him in the book is Danny DeVito. So once she oh. said that, I could really get a character associated yeah. with Bob with that voice. Yeah. And I believe um, the one and only Ivan is going to be a movie. Now, 
with COVID, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the whole release schedule was. I think it was originally scheduled for later this year. Yeah. So I, he may be playing the play in the movie as, as well. But Bob, this but book Bob, this goes book into, goes there's a hurricane, there's a hurricane. He, goes he goes to visit, to visit Ivan, Ivan and Ruby, and who's the little, little elephant, elephant in their in new animal, animal um, park that, that they, they live in. And I don't, I don't want to spoil too much, too much of it, but Bob, Bob kind of has, has to find his, his way back to his little girl, Karen, and then, um, you know, Ivan and Ruby, his friends. And along the way, he comes in contact with his lost sister. So, so that's another part of the story because Bob was dropped off in a box with his siblings on the side of the road. Also, um, yeah, that was kind of good. It was a good animal, you know, very, very quick read um, and a lot of humor. Yeah, nice. So, I'm embarrassed to say that I've never read the first book. So I, I know. Oh, it's a classic. <laughs> yeah, I need to read it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Um, I've got one more to talk about today. Um, mine is called To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. This is a teen series. This is the first in the series. There are three. Um, I actually read the number two and three during the quarantine, and I read the third one in about a day, which I don't do often because I've got um, little kids at home who make it a little hard to read sometimes. Um, but yeah, this is the first in the series. Um, they've also made the first two so far into movies on Netflix. The third one should be coming out at some point too, but maybe delayed. Um, but anyways, so what the series is about is a high school student named Laura Jean. Um, and throughout her life, she's been writing letters to every boy she's ever loved. Um, there were five or six letters or so, and um, she doesn't send them. She just writes them just kind of um, to get the feelings out, helps her um, cope with that. Um, and then one day her little sister finds these letters and she puts them in the mail and mails them to all of the boys. So suddenly these five guys get these letters and they think Laura Jean loves them, even though some of these letters were written five, six years in the past. Um, so the series kind of focuses on how Laura Jean deals with the embarrassment and the fallout of all these guys getting these letters. Um, and one of the big storylines is that one of the boys, um, Peter, that gets the letter, they actually um, end up in a fake relationship um, just to kind of make his ex-girlfriend jealous. Um, and then you kind of see what evolves from that fake relationship. Um, but th what I love about this series is just that it's so funny and Laura Jean is just so charming. She's this really naive character, but you just fall in love with her and she's got two sisters um, and they just have such a sweet bond with each other and with their father. Um, their father is a widow. So yeah, it's just, it's hilarious, it's light, it's funny. If you want to escape some of the stress from what's going on in the world today, definitely check out this series. Um, I know that they are available on Libby, and you should also check out the movies after you read the book because they're really good movies too. I read another series of Jenny Hans. It was the, the Summer Trilogy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, that was really cute, too. So if okay. you get those light romances, you know, they're the kind of things that once you start reading them, you just devour them because you have yeah. to find out what happens to these characters. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to check that series out next because um, I found that, you know, sometimes when you read an amazing book and you're done with it, you're like, I really miss, I miss Laura Jean. I miss her sisters. You know, yeah. those, it's those characters that you miss and you felt like you were yeah. friends with them. So yeah, I'd love to get into another series like that. So I'll check I'll check her other books out. Yeah, I think the first one was The Summer I Turned Pretty. Okay, yep, yeah, that's Oh, right, I love that book. Oh, yeah. you read it too? Okay, yes. I need to read it. Okay, it's going on my list. <laughs> <laughs> so the next book that I have is also a middle grade book um, for kids who are between the ages of 10 and up. And this is a newer title, it's called Roll With It. And it's by Jamie Sumner. I would compare this book to um, Wonder that a lot of people okay. enjoyed. 
Yep. So the main character is referenced on the cover of the book. Um, as you can see, she's in a wheelchair and she's holding a pie. So she loves to cook, especially to bake. And throughout the story, she writes different letters to the editors of cookbooks. Oh. So she will <laughs> create some of the recipes that she's reading and she will tell the person who wrote the recipe how hers turned out. Even if it was bad, she tells them that she would have changed something about the recipe. So okay. she's actually a really likable character. Um, she does um, have to move in the beginning of the story. So she lives with her single mother and they move from Tennessee to Oklahoma to take care of her grandfather. Her grandfather becomes very ill. So this character, her name is Ellie. Her real name is Lily, but she goes by Ellie. Um, she doesn't have friends in Tennessee, but when she moves, she actually has two new best friends. So it's called Roll With It, really, because she's able to roll with different situations that happen. I loved her as a character. I wish I was like her when I was a kid. I just could really relate to her. Great personality. Um, her friends were really kind, too. However, one of the turning points in the book is when she has a disagreement with one of her new friends, and um, she actually storms out of the cafeteria at school and she has a seizure when she's in the gym at school so that was really scary they had to take her to the hospital um, and then she was out of school for a week or two finally when she came back to school she was able to reconnect with her friends so um, this story has some really strong content but it's really lighthearted in a way um, you really feel for the characters in the end um, she does battle with some hardships with her grandfather but overall she's really um, happy with moving with her mom and she um, does love her new life um, one of the main parts of the book is that she um, is able to go into a competition to bake the best pie that she can make and she always wanted to go into this competition, but she was never able to because it was hosted in her new town. So it was really a nice way to show that change can be good. So you'll have to read the book if you want to find out if she won the pie contest. I might have to read that one. I, you know, sometimes I like a middle grade novel yeah. because I can get through it quickly. And I like the little, you know, the characters in that age of, yeah. you know, growing up. It's Oh, I'll put that one on my list. Yeah, it was a great read. Yeah. All right, so tune in uh, next time. We'll have another book break. And we really enjoyed sharing some of our titles with you and hope you found something that you would like to put on your own list. So take care and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye.